Welcome to the first lesson of Module 1, where you'll download and install Salesforce Data Loader on a Windows operating system. Data Loader is available for Mac OS and Windows operating systems. This lesson focuses on Windows. If you're on a Mac, please see the other lesson. Since Data Loader no longer bundles Java with its installation, we need to install Java on our machines before we install Data Loader. Use the link in this lesson or do a search for Azul Zulu and navigate to the free Java installs page. Salesforce recommends Java's JRE.zip installer package. Most of you will download this and double click it to run it and you're able to proceed with a pain-free install. If you're like me and everything ends up being unnecessarily difficult, you could also choose the JDK.msi installer. This is what worked for me on a new Lenovo laptop with Windows 11. Either package will open from the downloads and pop up a setup wizard window, which you can follow. The most important part of this process is to set the Java home variable. You'll see it has an X on it during the install process. Click the red X, select entire feature will be installed on the local hard drive. And now the red X is gone and you can proceed with the installation by clicking the next button. Now that Java is installed, you can proceed with the data loader install. Simply Google Salesforce data loader install to find the install link or log into a Salesforce environment and locate it within setup. You'll see a link that says download, whatever the most recent version is, for Mac and Windows. From downloads, double click the data loader zipped file to open it. Open the data loader folder and open the install file, which is a Windows batch file. A window pops up and asks you if you want to install data loader in the current folder, which is typically a temporary folder. Type the word no. The next prompt asks you where you want to install it. Type data loader as a single word. This creates a folder on your hard drive. The next prompt asks, do you want to create a desktop shortcut? Type yes. Do you want to create a start menu shortcut? Type yes. For most people, this works fine and is straightforward. For me, of course not. I have a different version of PowerShell installed on my machine. So when the data loader installer code was running, it couldn't find what it needed to create the shortcut, even though it said it created the shortcut. I'm still able to go to the data loader folder I created during the install and run data loader. Just click the Windows batch file and data loader opens. Obviously, I want a desktop shortcut too, so with only a few clicks, I'll make one myself. I start by right-clicking anywhere on my Windows desktop. In that menu that pops up, I select New, and then I choose Shortcut. The window prompts you to locate the executable file that the shortcut should reference. Locate the data loader folder you created during the install. Click on the Windows batch file in the data loader folder named Data Loader, and then click the OK button. On this screen, you should see the path that shows where the data loader executable file is located. Type a name for the shortcut, like data loader, and click the finish button. Now we've got our shortcut created. We're going to assign an image to our shortcut. Right click on the shortcut to open the menu and click on properties. Look for the shortcut tab within that properties menu and click the change icon button. This window pops up. You'll click the Browse button and navigate to the Data Loader folder. Select the cloud icon named Data Loader. It's the ICO file in the Data Loader folder. Click OK and Apply to save the changes. And now you have the Salesforce Data Loader desktop app installed on your Windows machine. What we'll do next is go through the live installation process for both Java and for Data Loader on Windows. And now we're going to head over to the Salesforce data loader download page and look for the Java link, which will take you to the Azul Zulu page. From here, you will choose the package that makes the most sense for you. In my install, I needed to use the JDK.msi for my windows. I clicked download. It went to my downloads. And from here, I click download unverified file which then gave me a folder to unpack from my downloads and sent me into an install process. The most important part here is to set that Java home variable to be installed on the hard drive. Click next, proceed with the install and click finish when it's all done. Now you can install data loader, install the package and from your downloads, double click to unpack the installed package. Double click the Windows batch file called install and the first prompt in the install process asks if you want to install data loader in the current folder. Type no. Then type the word data loader to create a new folder on your hard drive. If you already have data loader installed, type yes to overwrite it. A new version will then be installed. From here, the next prompt will ask you if you want to create a desktop shortcut and you'll type the word yes. Do you want to start menu shortcut? 
type yes, and from here the installation is complete. If the install process didn't successfully create the desktop shortcut, right click on your desktop, go down in the menu to the new option and choose shortcut. From here, you're going to locate the data loader folder that you created during the install process. And in that data loader folder, look for the option that says Windows batch file called data loader. Now we have the path to the program that we want the shortcut to run. Right click on the shortcut, go to properties and look for the shortcut tab. From here, click change icon, hit OK, and then use the browse feature to locate the data loader folder that you installed during the install process. Inside of this folder is an ICO file that contains a data loader image. Open it, hit OK, hit apply, and now you have a branded desktop app for data loader. Double click it to make sure that it opens data loader and you're good to go. Up next, you will learn about the login options for production and sandbox, along with some common login issue troubleshooting.